clearing now, Captain. Definitely Federation Starship. Accessing registry. Looks like they had a rough ride. NCC 1701C. USS Enterprise. Welcome back to the Sloppy Modeler, and welcome back to the USS Enterprise C, 1701C, by AMT uh, Round 2, update number one. And uh, I'd like to bring you up to speed with where uh, we're at, uh, how we got here a little bit, uh, and what is next, and, and some of the challenges that uh, uh, we face. So... Um, <clears throat> well, right now I'd like to walk through basically where uh, where the parts are at from a, uh, a primer perspective and a light block perspective and some of the other things that uh, that came together pretty well. And uh, we'll talk about the paint process. So, uh, if you'll see here, here is the uh, primary hull. And uh, I was able to get uh, all of the holes drilled for all of the windows and I, I have some footage I'm gonna splice in here uh, of doing all of those that drilling and kind of a learning process from uh, starting here with this particular piece and ending up excuse me and ending up uh, with uh, uh, the, the secondary hull done uh, the, the uh, port side or uh, starboard side and then the port side done um, a little better uh, than the upper hull outer ring uh, come, came together and then the upper hull inner ring really started to, 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 to look good and then finally the uh, lower saucer uh, and those windows there which I am thrilled with and again uh, right now I'm going to splice in uh, some of the footage of doing all of that from my learning experience all the way up to uh, kind of the process that I'm going to use for the um, for the next model which is going to be probably either the uh, JJ Enterprise or the uh, Voyager might be one of those two so we'll see uh, how that comes together but right now I've got to get to the all right, uh, still back with you here, just showing the setup from maybe from a different angle, and uh, so people can see the speed at which uh, I'm able to uh, to drill these holes. And of course, once you turn the camera on, it slows down, uh, obviously. But uh, I was thinking I was zipping along pretty good, but I wanted to show you kind of the setup here uh, from the overhead uh, camera, and that is when the juice uh, died on my. Uh, on my uh, drill. All right, so uh, I don't know if you can see this in camera or not. Looks like maybe you can, but essentially what I've got is my uh, DeWalt little nine and a half volt drill here, and I've got a uh, key chuck in it that is uh, down to, to zero, and basically for a window, So my drill is loose and that one's right on the on the inside so let's try that again and uh, again this is all just trying to figure out now one of the things I'm really working hard is keeping that drill bit in as far as it'll go to keep it from breaking but uh, this little drill here seems to do a pretty nice job as far as speed goes because I did punch a bunch of holes here a bit ago and um, 
you know, for you guys that are doing this with a pin vise, I, I appreciate that. Um, some of this thicker, thicker plastic is really, really tough to get through. But uh, this little drill really seems to be able to punch through quick without uh, using a fast Dremel. And you can kind of slow this one down too, or speed it up, or start it at a lower speed. Just like that if you want. Um, because it works not with the trigger, me trigger mechanism, but it works with... Um, by twisting the drill a little further via the gyroscope. And that's what I really like about this little uh, DeWalt here. And the battery lasts, e you know, I can easily last a, a full session of drilling uh, at this point. And, you know, your only drawback is the heat of the blade and making sure that you keep it uh, kind of in, uh, in its place where you want it to go. Now all I'm doing is just punching a single hole right here, and then uh, later on all I'll do is come back, and here's a good example. Do the top portion of the same hole, and again I'm just I'm just working out how to to do this on which direction to go and how to hold this drill and. I'm sure as I go a little longer, it will get possibly easier, maybe not. These are some tiny holes in this, uh, uh, in this program. And then I'm using a, um, oh, a light that would go on your hot shoe. Uh, basically, it's a light that would fire up and go on your hot shoe of your camera. And that, for me, is the only way I can get enough light in here to really see what I'm doing um, and do this with any degree of, of speed or accuracy. And, uh, you know, I think those holes look pretty nice. The drill bits I'm using are these numbered drill bits. I think I picked these up at um, drill index from 61 to 80. Uh, oh, there we go in camera. Drill index from 61 to 80. And I picked those up at a, uh, I think, a uh, Harbor Freight. I've got one around the corner here. I'm pretty fortunate with that. So when it comes to some of these cheap tools that uh, are going to, uh, in essence, almost be disposable, uh, this does a pretty nice job. So I'm trying to keep you in the shot here. Let me back this off a little bit so that you guys can see it better. But um, ultimately, this is going to take quite some time on the drilling. And, you know, for some reason, some of these go through a lot faster than the others. I don't know if it's the temp of the drill bit or um, torque. I'm trying to uh, evenly apply it uh, as I go. And uh, you can see, it, you know, it takes just a little bit of effort here to punch through these. And, uh, and as I said, this is just the bottom hole in each of those drilled windows and uh, other than using the power drill I just don't think there's any shortcuts because as we know the next step is to come back and add uh, a second hole in each of these and I am skipping some of them I'm not drilling every hole out uh, come back and, and do uh, uh, the second hole in each window and then on top of that, come back with your X-Acto knife and do that. So for the most part, and I'm going to turn this one away for a second. And we'll use the flashlight and pop that in. So uh, windows are, are coming along. I, I don't want to, there we go. I think we can push that through. Kind of show you the, the lights as they're, uh, as they're coming up. Now, one of the things I did... One of the things I did was I just went ahead and wedged it into the pylons and then taped it. And that seems to give me, a rather than working just the half piece, it seems to give me a lot more support and structure to, to drill against. And it's easier to hold on to and it's easier to, to work through that. And I'm using my uh, close-up camera here. I'm not using the overhead, so I apologize for going in and out of frame. 
but uh, for the most part on this here for drilling the holes, that's the, my fast way of doing it. Uh, on this side, I did drill like some on the bottom there. You can see uh, next to my hand, and those turned out pretty quick, pretty fast, and then I used actually, so I knew I could do it this way. Uh, so the next thing is, is as you know, on this uh, C and then on the Enterprise E and D, those big ships, uh, tons of windows, and uh, I'm just trying to figure out fast way for me to do them to where they're at least approximate uh, what the window should look like. Um, so for that, I just thought I'd give you a quick update on what I'm doing, and we will come back to you when we've made some more progress on drilling the windows. Thank you. All right, so uh, back with you here at the Sloppy Modeler on the USS Enterprise C, the uh, yesterday's Enterprise. And uh, essentially what I've done is I have drilled out the holes that I want to drill out across uh, the secondary hull with the first drill. And I'll have to go back and drill again, back to the other one, and then take the knife. But uh, with this uh, DeWalt here, you know, make sure I'm on scale. So with this DeWalt here, um, I know that uh, I was able to zip through these in under under 10 minutes to go through all of those holes and I didn't break one drill bit. Uh, the key is on that on that drill bit is that it allows you to start, and I'm going to show you a couple more here, it allows you to start short, um, uh, start easy and set that drill to where you want it and then you can come back in and punch that hole through. Uh, and then the lighting allows me to actually see what's going on. So I'm actually right on the uh, I'm right on the bottom of each of those holes and I've not had one where yet I'm sure I will where they overlap and I, I have uh, they'll drill too big a hole too close to from one side to the other one um, but for the most part this is um, uh, at least tolerable when it comes to drilling these holes. And again, it's been, uh, I'll have to obviously do a significant amount of cleanup, but uh, it's much faster than using a pin vise. And, and for you guys that uh, use a pin vise and have absolutely perfect windows in these small models, congratulations. Uh, that's why, again, you're professionals, I'm an amateur. And uh, uh, on the other hand, I have uh, uh, such limited patience compared to you guys that if I tried it with the pin vise, I'd be about six holes in and would be uh, ready to can the model and say, oh, well, we're going to move on to something else here. So uh, I'm going to keep drilling away here and uh, we'll bring you an update on, on some more progress. But you can see there was like four or five done. Uh, in a matter of about uh, two minutes or so uh, just to go through those and um, you know I, I this is doable for me this is uh, this is okay like I said if I had a much larger one to do or uh, if I did the E and then the, the D and then the, the C the E the D All in one shot I think I would be shot quite honestly uh, I'm not prepared to do that many windows in uh, in the late summer here so I will be back with you after some more progress but as you can see uh, drilling those holes has gone pretty quick and they look pretty decent and uh, uh, we'll have to just uh, go along this side of the hull here I already did kind of I don't know if this is like uh, on the A and the refit in the A, the Arboretum. It would be in the same spot, the same deck, and it kind of looks like that. Um, so I don't know if I might do a backwash of green behind that to show kind of an Arboretum. They're so small, you're not going to see anything in it, of course. But uh, anyway, so uh, making decent progress, I think, and we will be back with you uh, after a while. Thank you. All right, so... Using my uh, super uh, handy, handy, handy dandy DeWalt there. Uh, this is the product. One of the things I did is I turned the speed down. I was at max speed and I turned it down to about uh, eight on the top there. And um, doing that really gave me a little more torque. Didn't break, <clears throat> didn't break the drill bits, but uh, went in fantastic. And then so I was able to uh, fill in or drill 
the bottoms of, of the ones that I wanted to have drilled out and across the top. So now I have to go back in and redrill uh, those that uh, need to go across the, the top holes now. And then uh, uh, once that's in, go in with my, my Stanley knife and figure out how to best way to clean those up. And it might be from the inside. You can see that there's quite a bit of debris uh, on that inside. So uh, for this part, I, I, I went pretty quick. Uh, and one of the things, again, by slowing that drill bit down, that saved, didn't save time, but it, it, it seemed to make the drills go, uh, the, the bits go in a lot easier and, uh, didn't have quite as much drift. Um, I think the holes look pretty nice. Uh, the lights look pretty good in that, uh, at the moment, even just with the circular, I know I got to get them ovoid, uh, if it, uh, not necessarily oval, but, uh, ovoid if at all possible. And then uh, we'll uh, we'll continue on to the saucer section. And uh, um, so two things: this lighting is absolutely fantastic. So uh, with that, you know, you can turn it up or down depending uh, on the color temp that you want. Uh, you can see the difference there, just in color temp. I like it, uh, you know, in the, the definitely the cool white rather than warm light. And then of course you can. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Here's the color temp. Uh, that's uh, soft white, and then this is the the cool white. So I like it bright, and I like it uh, about oh, maybe maybe 4,500 Kelvin or so. Uh, no pun intended on the Kelvin timeline. The uh, key on these, I think, is that uh, uh, the guys who put the divots in here at uh, at AMT uh, they weren't 100% straight either. You can see them drift a little bit up and down. Uh, you can see them drift a little bit up and down the line there. So I'm, I'm, I think if I just get the holes in and get them uh, rudimentarily or, or uh, you know, approximately close, I'm going to be, be real happy with that. And uh, uh, so here's a good example. Here are the, um, the just the ones with my thumb where they were painted on or drilled on the bottom. And then on the other side, I actually spent a little bit of time uh, you can see here working on the um, the the top hole got taken out, and then I just spent just a couple of seconds with a an exacto knife to to do that. So I think the real real pain in the butt is going to be uh, putting micro crystal clear in these when they're all said and done, and uh, that might be something once that paint is done is is rather than use my my super fine uh, hot, uh, hyperdermic needle is I might just uh, do a wash of that glue on there uh, and just fill those holes with just, uh, you know, rubbing the rag over it and then coming back over it with a Q-tip, that wet Q-tip. That'll fill those holes, hopefully, and let them dry once I've got all the lighting in and all that behind it. But, um, yeah, so the update is uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of thrilled with my little drill there. I think it does a great job, and... Uh, uh, I think this will go through the rest of these on this single charge, charge it overnight, and uh, be ready to come back to the hull section. On the hull, I did hit just a couple of those. Uh, you might be able to see them right there in the in the light. Yep. Uh, so I did some of those and uh, some of those just as practice. I figure uh, if you can't open it up on the on the most important ones, uh, you know you got no business doing this stuff. So, but uh, practice on the secondary hull. And uh, I've got the, those in, and actually I've got them in, uh, drilled in on one side. Uh, I've got them drilled in on one side there, but not the other yet, and so we'll do that next. Um, so, just a quick update, and these little drill bits uh, work fantastic. Uh, they're the right size, and they're doing the job as needed. So we'll be back with you uh, after a bit. All right, hey, welcome back. So what you're looking at is about another uh, 20 minutes or so of drilling. Uh, and uh, I think what you can see here is that uh, uh, that second drill bit did a pretty nice job of bringing those holes. There's some, I haven't cleaned anything up yet with the, uh, with the uh, scalpel or with the, the, the hobby knife. But uh, I don't think it's going to take a significant amount of cleanup. It'll take some, but I think you can see that uh, using that drill is a much faster way of, of getting those holes in and getting them done quickly. So I, like I said, I haven't cleaned any of these up yet with the, um, I haven't cleaned any of these up yet with the, the hobby knife. I don't know if, uh, you can see this any better now that the, there's some lighting in there. Let's do it this way. Um, so 
and let's kill maybe that one uh, so you can see that uh, what those lights are going to look like uh, both up in the neck and uh, now in the uh, in the secondary hull so for windows i uh, i think i'm 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 pretty pleased with that first time drilling windows out uh like i said with a stanley knife i can uh, clean those up pretty quick and actually my my hobby uh, drill ran out of juice as i was doing this side so really these are what it looks like with the single holes and that even looks all right but I think drilling it out, that, that extra hole really uh, uh, adds uh, the oval look to it and, and brings it up like it would uh, in the Star Trek side. So anyway, I'm going to uh, continue working on uh, uh, cleaning up now with the hobby knife. I'm going to put a brand new blade in there. And uh, once that blade is in, we will uh, start cleaning up as the uh, thing charges. And probably won't do any more tonight. I'll do some uh, later on in the week. Uh, weekend's coming up, and that's kind of nice. But uh, that's just some quick uh, progress on the uh, USS Enterprise C, yesterday's Enterprise. And we'll be back with you. Thank you. All right. So uh, we are making some progress here. And uh, just to show you where we're at, um, most of these windows have been drilled and uh, cleaned out to a large degree. There's those, and uh, I think uh, uh, the other side looks better. That was the second half that I did. This side, it gets a little bit uh, ganky. I think some uh, a little putty and a little fill on some of those will be fine. And then uh, on this side, though, I much improved. Uh, so have some cleanup to do, and I think that that's going to look okay. Uh, if we get uh, some light in there, all of a sudden the light uh, changes it up a little bit and gives it a little bit of fun right there. So uh, with my drill and a couple of uh, uh, blades and a few of these, I actually used my uh, saw, which I keep in this one. And this is my um, that's my razor saw, and and that is about the right width if you're careful about how far in that you go, you know. So um, that's what I use to square off some of those ends on the other side. But for the sake of time, essentially all I did here was grab the drill and drill, and then um, uh, use the old uh, router bit trick by uh, by drill bit. Uh, it's hard on drill bits, but uh, you know these are, are relatively inexpensive and 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 quite honestly disposable. So um, I think that's going to be okay on that uh, on that piece of the hull. So that's a couple hours work, and I think that's uh, that's sufficient for uh, for this skill set. Like I said, I did get uh, some of these uh, into uh, the the primary hull, and I have a little bit of a beef. I've got kind of a big beef with uh, with these guys. So if you're going to like this kit, here's one of the, uh, right there is one of the um, navigation lights. There's the other one on that side, a navigation light. And in the front, there's a navigation light. Uh, so that navigation light is also right above that locator pin. And the locator pin right there uh, is right where the light needs to go. My, my finger's over the top of it. So that means in order to drill this and put a, uh, put a, um, a LED in there or a stovetop or whatever I'm going to do, even if you use uh, uh, optical fiber in there, you lose your locator pins, and it's the exact same thing on the bottom of the primary hull. Same same challenge. So here's the here, my fingers on the pin underneath, and it is literally at the pin at the top. So you're going to lose all the locator pins on this C because of this uh, because where this locator pin goes, and 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 trying to put an LED for the lower hull in there. So. Um, it would not kill round two AMT that instead of doing it there, move it here and, and just do like four spots. I'm trying to approximate here. Uh, just do like four spots of locator pins that aren't on the, the, the compass points. 
uh, being mindful of where the the thrusters go, uh, being mindful of that 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 is is just it's just a little bit crazy how how it's not thought out and maybe this kit was probably done prior to a lot of LED lighting going in and, and things of that nature. Here are the nacelles and the uh, pylon uh, connected, and I don't know whether this as you can see has a, a noticeable angle going up and I don't know if that's because I need to to crunch that down to make them 90 like the or close to 90 like the uh, Excelsior and the B are and the, uh, the NX and the NCC Excelsior or whether to let them relax and and go because there is a bit of droop uh, there's a bit of droop in this direction here. It droops down. Same thing on this side. It droops down. So I'm not sure how that that is going to look or how it's supposed to look. And I'll have to check uh, some of the, the the drawings or the photos or some of the reference material that's out there to see what uh, to see what I can come up with. I am kind of pleased. Uh, this is just a real quick preliminary fit. Seems to be fitting together nice. And uh, actually, those uh, seams are going to look are actually not going to be bad. And I, you know, for a nacelle, that's that's saying something. Uh, that seam is going to go together. And this is not even glued. This is just just right there. I just did a quick preliminary sand on it, uh, kind of cleaning up all the different spots. So I, I am pleased with that. I'm not pleased with this um, seam here, although that's kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth because. Uh, without having that space between them, uh, there's no place to run your wires like in the D where you have to trench uh, across, a trench across here and then uh, lay in your wire uh, and then putty back over it or use, I think someone's got a, a photo etch kit that'll go over the top of that. And that's probably what I'll do when I do my clear D that I have sitting in the stash. Uh, however, uh, so again, I am talking out of both sides of my mouth that it's going to be okay to run wire through there, and then once I glue that, uh, once I glue that together and seal that up, uh, kind of like the way that the um, the the Excelsior version goes together. Once I glue that up, I'll fill that seam with putty, sand it, and and call it good. The other thing I've seen people do is put nav lights back here. Uh, around this, uh, it's it's essentially what's the shuttle bay on that, and I I don't know I don't know if that is canon I don't know if that needs to be done like that uh, I'm not sure if it goes on the bottom a blinker on the bottom, so I have to review some of the different builds and I'm not sure I've seen a lighted build of this kit besides Boyd's, who of course did an awesome job with his. Uh, and, and there's a few others, but I, I just have to spend some time with that. So that is the progress for this evening. I'm actually kind of pleased uh, not having ever drilled windows before. I, I know some are turned left and right, but uh, we'll see what happens when you get a little paint on those. And paint doesn't hide the evil. I get that. But uh, uh, I think that uh, by the time it's lit, uh, we're going to be okay. And then by the time you have your markings here uh, in that grid marking that is uh, so prevalent on the, the, the Enterprise C here I think you're gonna be okay I think it's gonna kit's gonna go together nice uh, looks like it's not too bad on the seams uh, I think if you spend a little time with your glue making sure that glues together you're not gonna be too bad on on how that's gonna come together so I think it's just some really this one's a matter of paying uh, a great deal of attention to it when you put it put it in play and go. It looks like there's plenty of room for lights in there. Although, there's not plenty of room to put lights in here uh, that you would just do it against the hull. So I think I'm gonna have to do them on the bottom here and an LED strip tape here and maybe one across the bottom here, not so much. And then definitely one in this neck portion here on both sides to fill that neck up with enough light to get in there and I think maybe there's enough room to lay an LED tape along that section there. It's going to be tight, it's going to be close. Uh, I'm not sure if that 
I'm not sure if that'll work that way or not, but let me let me pop this open for a second here. Now that I've got this pretty well done and taken care of. Yeah, so there's really not. There's not a lot of room in there to lay in light. So there might be room here to lay in a strip and uh, across the bottom a strip and across that pointing that way might be able to fill that up with enough light. I really think I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm really going to have to fill this in with uh, two coats or three coats of black for the light blocking and then uh, a couple of coats of white to hopefully bounce that that uh, that light around inside of the the secondary hall. All right, so that is the update for drilling windows, and uh, it's been kind of an adventure. I will be back with you uh, on uh, doing the drilling for the uh, primary hull, both the lower section here and the upper. And uh, wish me luck. Thank you. All right, so we'll see how much of this is actually usable but basically when it comes to drilling these holes I've kind of developed a quick process or quick enough for me I should say that uh, gets me around the um, around the horn rather uh, at least with uh, out resorting to uh, chisel and stone in the hammer um, so essentially this drill bit size works pretty good because it gives me the lower portion of the window and uh, I can fit the drill into it and then if I drill at an angle I can touch the top one just like so and then with a little bit of pressure on this and now I am drilling on max here uh, I'm drilling on max for speed to go through, and it seems like it's still not so hot that I'm melting plastic. Uh, it just seems like I'm punching through pretty quickly here without too much difficulty. Um, however, when I go to shave between the uh, between the window, essentially what I've done, and I hopefully can get this into screen here, um, basically on and then let it just drop into the into the hole beneath it and right there uh, is two perfect windows uh, are real close and then because it's got stuff in the back what I then will do you'll see it's got these raised edges again take my chisel and it actually works a little better to go from this angle apparently just take my chisel and just run it right along here pretty quickly. These are where I just drilled the actual first holes, but uh, that cleans that up really nice. And then you can again see those those two holes that I just drilled are right uh, right up at the top there. Uh, then uh, let me make sure make sure I got them right here as I come around uh, right there. So those are the two holes that I just drilled. And for the most part, I think that those look as good as anything out there for me without having to use a, uh, a, a Stanley knife uh, or X-Acto knife and then come back in it. So, again, drilling the holes to go quick enough, I'm at, at the max level there. And uh, basically just pick the bottom of the hole. And again, using my little gyroscop gyroscopic drill... Just punch down through the bottom of that, and I and uh, I've done probably 150 holes without breaking this particular drill bit. Uh, I haven't broken a couple, uh, but that was when I was using the high speed to. Um, and I bet you I'm about running out of juice. That's when I was using the high speed here to. Um, I was using the high speed to to shave out the in in inside of the each drill hole and it was causing me some uh, breakage which w using that pressure would do that but by turning that pressure down or that speed down again to 
eight or nine, it seems seemed to have worked pretty good. So um, at first I couldn't get the, the hang of it, and I started down here uh, with these holes, and they're kind of kind of oblong, goofy. But then uh, as I came around to this side, uh, suddenly the holes started looking a lot nicer. Uh, I decided to try one with just a half there, like a shade was drawn. I know that seems a little goofy, but then coming back around, uh, for the most part, I think I'm pretty pretty okay with that, considering that uh, there are over a thousand windows on this E kit. Uh, doing the, I'm sorry, not a thousand, over 500. Uh, I was doing the counting here, and there's probably 300 just on top, and then the other sides. I wish I had learned that trick a little earlier on the um, on this piece. Those are a little bit overly large for the scale, uh, but they're all right, and I'm not going to, to play with them anymore. Same thing with this uh, other side. I, did, I, I got a little better there, but once I got to the hull, uh, and now getting into these, these, especially like these final sections here, um, you know, I, I think that's going to be okay, uh, especially you put some light through it. And that's going to be, um, put some light through it. And for the most part, I think uh, I, I'll be happy with that. Especially when you get all the paint and all the other things that are involved in that. So I'm going to continue the drill process here. And I will be back with you with another update. Thank you. Uh, okay, so um, we'll stop Lou for a second there as he uh, goes through the, uh, goes through the, uh, 66 inch uh, original series that he's doing which is uh, just <laughs> unbelievable I don't know how much of this you can see uh, on the lower section here or this is the upper hall all of those uh, windows have been cut in or at least the first drill has been cut in all around here those little ones uh, those have had the first drill bit in there and then uh, all around the outer hall uh, all of that has been put into play uh, there is one more set of lights, which I think is right here. Uh, yep, one more set of lights is all around where my hand just went. And uh, so I've got to drill that yet. And on the lower hull, those actually went in pretty fast and pretty quick as well. So all of those are in uh, in the lower section. i got to say, I'm loving these uh, drill bits. Uh, I ordered them off of Amazon, and I've only broken like two, and that was because, quite honestly, it was uh, my mistake, not the mistake of the drill bit. Uh, but those are all in on the first hole, and then I'll go back in and drill a secondary hole, which a hole, which I did on on these here. So I've not taken a uh, uh, not changed the speed of the drill yet on on these inner ones, and then uh, what I'll do is 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 break that center section with the drill bit and uh, in my eye it I that works so much nicer for me than trying to do it with the uh, trying to do it with the, the exacto knife it just was they were coming out terrible so that's the upper and lower uh, uh, hull uh, the primary hull are just about uh, complete uh, as far as the drilling goes uh, I will not be saddened when it's done uh, it is, I uh, almost have carpal tunnel syndrome uh, with the uh, repetitive use injury there, uh, just, just turning these quick. And now you'll notice though that these windows here are much, much smaller than some of these on the outer hull. So I had to move to a much smaller drill bit uh, that matches the scale of the windows there. And I think once this is lit up with some LED strip tape, and this is going to be kind of a... Uh, uh, it's going to be kind of a challenge or kind of a delicate placement here because really you have uh, you do have nice area around the outer rim where you've got so much of this here uh, that matches up nice you've got lots of area to put the strip tape in and enough room in there so I'm not worried about that and then you've got a nice little stretch right here for another batch of, tape, of, of uh, strip tape and then you've got one more batch in here uh, for strip tape, that would be the that would should light up the lower sensor dome, and should light up the hall, uh, the BC decks up here, the bridge and the BC decks uh, uh, up here. Now I had a thought on spaceship design that these get 
uh, closer together as you get uh, as you as you move towards the the inner hull. And uh, in my mind, the geometry of that doesn't necessarily work because normally. Uh, you've got more slope towards the outside here as it slopes down and <laughs> to me that wouldn't give you enough clearance to have a full size deck you know of, of 12 feet or so or 14 feet probably between between decks um, in this here so maybe uh, I'm not sure how many decks the the Enterprise C had uh, I'm thinking probably 35, 36 decks, and that's just a, a wild go uh, guesstimate. But uh, it just doesn't seem to me like there's enough thickness in that total total thickness of that hull to have 30 some decks in there. So maybe it was part of the other. So that's the only thing I I, I would question on uh, on on that. But obviously much. Uh, sharper and brighter, brighter, brighter minds than I have have questioned that and 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 figured that out from a geometry and, and the hull. So we're going to continue drilling uh, when we come back. But I just wanted to give you a quick update. All in all, I probably spent uh, maybe two hours total drilling all of this, and uh, I probably have another three to do with putting the drill bit in and 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 opening up those those hull uh, those holes. Uh, top to bottom. So we will come back to you uh, in a while. Thank you. All right, so let's see if we can't get this into frame a little bit, maybe, hopefully. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're there. So uh, the top is done, and uh, now I am trying to finish up the lower hull. I only have this row here yet to do. After several different attempts at trial and error of how to quickly do these windows, I ultimately ended up at Lowe's and got their little uh, micro electric powered, not get, uh, not battery powered, because I didn't think a battery would last long enough on this program. And uh, what I did is I took uh, that and bought the smallest additional chuck for it, so it's your in and rolling and could put uh, small size drill bits. So I'm using uh, what I have found to work pretty well for me is I drilled the holes with one size larger. So if I drilled them with like a 69, I went up to a 72 or so. because I found that that drifts a little bit inside that hole that you just uh, made with the actual drill bit. And then using a very uh, adjustable, this goes pretty fast to slow. I'm on setting two and it goes to setting five, but using much, much slower deal. And then also, it's also about rhythm is just figuring out uh, that going from the bottom of the or going the, from the bottom hole up seems to work better than going from the top down and uh, ultimately I'm just once again drilling through the same spot and uh, you know just shaving that that plastic between the two drill holes just shaving it back and forth so I'm not actually using the side of the bit until I'm completely all the way through I'm actually using the, the actual teeth part or the angled part of the drill bit to first go through there and then clean it out with the uh, the side and I've not broken a bit with this uh, Dremel and I did uh, probably a third of the top and now I've done 98% uh, of the bottom and uh, you know not only does it give you a nice uh, clean oval hole it's a lot quieter than some of the other things I was using and that speed is is much improved I had another Dremel but it was not variable speed and my drill was too slow 
I was snapping bits with the actual DeWalt drill trying to, to clean these out. So, um, you know, at this point, it's been a, a pretty much of a learning process and kind of a rhythm process, as I mentioned, to figure out how to trim these away and not have a runaway hole for me that gets too large or, or go side to side. And, uh, again, this has been an exercise in drilling because I have the E to do and the D to do at some point. I have the uh, Voyager and I have the 1500 scale JJ Enterprise, all of which are going to be required to um, use a drill to drill through these holes and create the oval signature oval hole or window in a Star Trek starship and uh, you know I'm sure it would be easier for all of us if the guys at Star Trek had created a porthole approach where it was just uh, one drill bit and you're done but I guess uh, this makes it look more realistic and more uh, challenging to do in the long run. So as I come to it now, here's the last hole. And this is actually pretty welcome. This is the last hole in the kit and done. So that is... Uh, going around on the outside with a cleanup. And then after I've gone through, again, I've shown you this before, but uh, taking the chisel and scraping away that interior kind of opens up that hole the rest of the way. And uh, now it'll be time to, to wash these parts, to color block them, or light block them, I should say. And uh, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out if after, if those are gonna fill up and I'm probably going to have to find a pick or something like that to go through each one of those again when they're all said and done. So um, if I take my flashlight here and, and run it through, you can see that the more recent ones are much more uniform and uh, they're much nicer. That's on the top, or on the bottom rather, I'm sorry. And then on the top, uh, these turned out pretty well towards the center of the hull. Towards the outside, I was using a different process, and that, that makes it look tough. And, of course, when you're looking at this under high magnification trying to do it, using my big glasses here, when you're using high magnification, it looks, uh, you know, every flaw shows up instantly, and I'm sure it's going to show up under paint. But for my first drill program, uh, this probably took <clears throat> utilizing, that, uh, utilizing that Dremel, and again, it's the little tiny Dremel, I don't know what it's called, uh, I don't know if we got the box hanging around somewhere. No, I don't, but a uh, little tiny Dremel. It worked really nice, and then, like I said, I added that additional chuck rather than a, a culotte, a collet, collet, I think is the proper name for it, uh, and trying to hold a small drill bit in there. So both that and the small chuck for my other drill have paid off handsomely uh, during this drilling experience. Uh, my neck is killing me from looking straight down for uh, five or six hours, but I didn't have to spend two weeks using a Stanley knife, scalpel, and uh, points and broken bits trying to, to clean these out because, like I said, uh, I would have given up much earlier uh, and uh, not made any progress on it. Even these little tiny ones are done, and I did those with a super, super tiny drill bit. I was able to do those holes, uh, and those look really nice uh, in here. These are really tiny, really tiny, and they're going to turn out okay, I think, uh, in a long So with that, the next step is to wash all of these parts, wash all the oils of my hands and any release agent. They're not too bad. It's kind of an older kit, but it's not too bad. And then uh, once it's uh, washed, once they're cleaned up, uh, then I will spend some time, again, deburring some of this stuff uh, from the bottom and the inside out, and then spray it with uh, 
probably three coats of black on the inside and uh, a bunch of coats of black on the inside three coats of black and then probably a, a coat or two of white to really to really give that that light time to bounce around because on the inside you've got room for a light strip here room for a light strip around here on the top and uh, again, another light strip there and a light strip there. So I'm going to double up, maybe even triple up, or at least double up the light strip here around that around that section. And on the bottom, where you really need light to come up into these here, uh, you are pretty fortunate um, because you've got lots of room to lay strip tape here, all the way around. And probably I might just do two layers, depending on how much room I've got. And then there's room for a layer around here, and then there's room to go. One there, and one there, one there, one there, whatever. I'll have to figure that out. I don't want to overload it, but I do definitely you want a lot of light in that kit in order to bring it uh, into play. So, uh, thank you for uh, watching uh, the uh, exercise in drilling. It was a lot of fun. Uh, honestly, it was, because it was learning to hone a skill and a craft and, and to see how, uh, uh, how I can maybe figure this out. Uh, to the finisher, the start line, really. <clears throat> for this so all of the parts that you see here have been uh, light blocked and <clears throat> excuse me and uh, they have been um, primed on the inside so two coats of black two heavy heavy coats of black uh, primer and then a coat of white primer for the interior so this is ready to lay in the uh, LED light strip to light that up and then <clears throat> this uh, same thing two heavy coats of black primer and then a coat of white primer to uh, to light block that and then all of the parts have had kind of the same thing so there's all the drilling done I do have the holes in here for the navigation light and for the anti-collision light uh, and on the bottom I think I'll just show you that real quick uh, there are four holes here two on the uh, port side two on the starboard uh, and um, I am gonna put in two green lights on this side and two red lights on that side and I've seen that uh, done with a couple other builds and I think that looks good along with uh, green and red and a white flasher here and then a white flasher light anti-collision light uh, on top of here so there really will be four um, my math right uh, one two three I'm sorry three uh, anti-collision lights because there's not one on the bottom uh, and then solid white at the front, solid white at the front of this. Uh, now, what I did is I did nick off these uh, locator pins so I could drill through there and light block around it. On the bottom, I left them. Oh, no, I, I nipped them off because that's almost exactly where the lights for the, the navigation lights go. So that is this, the primary hull. Secondary hull is ready to go together. And I think I've got the piece here somewhere. Here you go. Uh, I do not like, I do not like the way that this, um, that this goes together. First of all, this is pretty thin plastic, it seems like, and to get it matched up, etc., etc. Okay, so there it's closed, but I don't like the way that this goes in. Uh, this is the impulse engine, and that kind of has to go in. And I see I'm having challenges with it already. Uh, this has to go in kind of like that. <clears throat> there we go. So that is in. Light blocking that is just going to be an, a mother, I think. Now, I have light blocked it, but the seam is going to be uh, not fun. And uh, I'm not excited about that. So that's going to go in there. Uh, there's already a giant, I can already see a giant hole uh, and the top that I'm going to have to fill in with putty to, to close that up. And it's just it's just not good engineering there. Sorry, MT, but that's just not good. This is a blue impulse engine. Uh, don't ask me why, but that is what is in the, in the cannon. So I'm going to do a blue bulb for that uh, paint pointed out. Uh, at least I'll figure out how to do blue there and, and, and uh, get it so that it's diffused and and then I'll have to light block it so that it's not throwing blue into the other stuff here. So that's the secondary hull. These nacelles, I said, are going to go together pretty nice, I assume. I think they are. 
And uh, so the, the key here, line up the back, line up the front, hopefully, there we go. And then uh, this is, again, solid blue all the way around here. So I'm going to have to work on uh, how to do that. And then I'm going to work on the diffusion, really try to get that diffusion down pat so that it's not so, so um, uh, overt that you've got uh, bulbs running through there. I did light block this. I don't know if I needed to or not, but I didn't want wires coming through here and then to, to lose that light blocking. But uh, So that's been light blocked on the inside and painted white. Uh, there's not going to be light in there. I've decided not to do any lights around uh, the section there, but uh, that is the pylon, secondary hall, and uh, etc. Now, one of the things I did on both the top and the bottom, according to some of the different, according to some of the different uh, source material, research material that I used, I just went ahead and took my mechanical pencil and I laid out the different, I laid out the, 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 the different colors where they're going to go. And according to um, the directions here, in essence, you really have hull colors that are going to be the overall base color, and that would be this outer edge and this inner edge here, and then parts of uh, the sides of the hull. So that's going to be an interesting paint job around that around that section there. Uh, and then you've got a light gray, uh, which is going to be um, probably this color here is light gray. And then you've got dark gray indications, which is going to be this color here. And I'm actually going to not use dark gray. I'm going to use uh, some, some different stuff. So E is Russian flanker blue gray. And that's what uh, kind of what I went shopping here. And uh, I'm going to have to get my glasses to read these. But I'll show you what colors I got to match what I'm looking for. So... Um, Model Master uh, D is the overall light gray. Anyways, D, this is what I'm going to use for my blue. It's a, uh, a medium blue, and I might put a touch of white in there to bring that down. For the hull, I have um, found light gray, and that has got a blue tint to it. So that's, there's light gray there. And this is Model Master 5L light gray, and uh, that is uh, an acrylic, uh, an acrylic paint. All of these are acrylics. Uh, I have a for the um, uh, blue gray Russian flanker blue gray. I couldn't find the model masters for this. Uh, it's an enamel anyway, so this, these are old instructions. But I found this 5P pale blue-gray. And so the pale blue-gray is going to be for the, the blue-gray uh, 2123. So there's your blue-gray. There's your medium blue. This is light gray. Light gray for the hull, overall hull color. I think there's one more light gray, or pale blue gray, sorry. There you go, three of the pale blue gray. And there is one for the light gray, so i got three of the light gray for the hull. And then two of the Panzer uh, RAL dark gray. So, um, I have toyed with using this JN gray, XF12, but that's got too much of a greenish hue for, for what I want to do on this model. And then keep in mind that not only do we have that color here, I don't like that mix of those two colors. I don't like the mix of those, uh, that color blue there, uh, green, greenish blue, whatever it is. I don't like those colors at all. And uh, we'll just have to see. So uh, when this comes together, I don't think I'm going to use the JN gray, but I said I'm going to use that light gray. And here's my uh, first look. At, I've not opened these up until just now. So here's kind of a look at what decals are included with this kit. And there's a bit of a 
Oh, that's interesting. Um, there's your uh, detail set. There's how to do Starfleet alternatives. Very interesting. So really, it's two sheets here for this uh, for this decal kit. The first one you do get um, over the nacelles here, and then also uh, over the nacelles uh, or over the pylons this blue gray here so I think I like that color scheme I'm gonna use them for for these decals here depending on how they go in really nice again here's blue for the impulse engine so they've kinda of got that covered uh, out of the gate now I'm not going to use uh, I'm not going to use these decals here because I think that's off of what I want to do for the green that's off for what I want to do. These pieces here are actually probably covered by those there. So this is a neat decal kit, so I'm kind of excited about it to use it. I've had a little bit of trouble with it in the past, but that's okay. Here's for the aft section behind the, the, the uh, shuttle bay. And uh, uh, again, the strong back is included over here along with more, um, more uh, lifeboats as they come in. And then here it looks like Aztecing of some sort. I don't know if I'll use any of that. Here's for around the bridge, and I think that's going to be tough because uh, you, these are pretty well raised, and to get this to lay in nice is going to be tough. But it's a nice piece for that with that color there. Uh, and then they're showing the strong back here on the bottom um, for the details there. And that's going to look nice once that's in and sanded and, and, and cleaned up. So I, I think I'm okay with that. I don't know what that piece is there. I think it's uh, missing of some sort, but that's, that's all right. So those are the decals. Now that I take a look at them in full-fledged full glory there, and uh, we'll just put those away until they get messed up later on, because I'm sure I can manage that <laughs> at some point. And uh, so that is the progress Pylons are ready to go, and uh, that is the progress on the upper and lower hull. Same thing on the lower hull. Uh, these are going to be uh, very thin stripes. There's three of them, very thin stripes to paint, and taping those off is, is going to be a challenge, obviously. I am pleased with the windows on the bottom. I think those look good, and I have my little black marker here for when I need to do a window that's not drilled and I can set that in and it's gonna be a, give me a real dark black window that's uh, like it's turned off and the rest will be lit up pretty nice and this does shine through nice uh, as you can see from the, the lighting alright so um, now the next step is to lay in my LED tape which is gonna go around the outside around this section here here it's a little tougher, uh, but I want to light up this bottom so it's right over the top of it. I'm going to do LED tape all the way around that section there, and actually probably two layers or three layers, just to get enough light into that. And then for the corners, uh, I'm going to use some um, uh, little tiny. Uh, I'm not sure this is kind of acting up a little bit on me. So if we look at the right side of this and we go into that hole, I think that's going to look really good, um, just the red on that side. And I left them extremely small, uh, very, very small holes to represent scale much better. Uh, this will be one will be white, one will be green, and then same on the bottom side. But uh, uh, to do this with scale is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, there'll be uh, two reds here and two greens on that side. Uh, and I'm using these little tiny stovetop uh, 1.8 millimeter LEDs to do that. And they're really bright, so I think I'm good. And then, of course, there's some sand paint uh, at that stage. So my paint's ready to go. I need to work on electrical and lighting next. The drilling was... Um, a learning experience is probably the best phrase for it but it's it's done and uh, I have found a technique 
that now seems to work. Uh, you can just see the difference in how nice they look in the lower hole and then in the upper hole. And actually my last set of windows, uh, I believe, were um, like around here. No, 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 around here. And they're tiny and then same thing. So I'm excited. <clears throat> I think we're going to, uh, I think we're going to pull this off. I was really, really considering canning it and starting with a new one. But I evened up some of the holes and uh, I um, uh, just decided to live with some of the other ones like around here that these are probably the worst is on this side where I first started. Not so bad, not so bad, but uh, I got a little bit of filling to do on a couple of these on this side. And uh, um, regardless, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it and light it and call it the uh, first learning experience. So with that, uh, next steps again lighting, and then uh, once it's lit, uh, I'm going to do this I think in three phases. I'm going to close up the hull with the lighting inside of it because I can just run two wires out. I'm only going to run two circuits, one for all of the lights and one for the strobe, and that's just you know two sets of wires coming out of that. Each nacelle, same thing. There's only going to be uh, two two circuits coming out of that. So there's a circuit for all of the lighting, including the navs, including the bassard collectors, including the chiller grills, and that's going to be one circuit in each uh, in each nacelle, and then one for the nav blinking, and then I'll tie the, the navs together with this nav, uh, and and that is is uh, just going to be two circuits, uh, and then when I tie it into the base, I'm actually just going to have one button that turns it all on because I can uh, wire in the circuit for the NAV flashers, for the anti-collision flashers. I can wire that in all to one switch, uh, and then I can actually add a, a, a momentary switch uh, for the, uh, changing the circuit up on the, on the anti-collision. So uh, this is going to be much easier to, um, to light up and to wire. So we'll get on with that. And uh, for now, this is the end of update number one of the USS uh, Enterprise NCC-1701C. Uh, thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. Uh, thank you for uh, liking my videos if you do like them. And uh, for the comments that uh, you're excited about seeing this. I am too. And I think it's kind of an amazing uh, uh, opportunity to, to figure out the paint scheme on this. And because I looked and looked and looked online, there's a few people that have done great paint schemes. But I'm going to spend a little more video time showing exactly where I lined each of these out uh, to, to trigger it uh, for where the lines begin and end and what colors and then how, to, how I'm going to uh, com complete and spray all of this when, in the long run. So, thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, please like that video. Please hit that bell to get notified of when update number two comes out. But for now, this is a Sloppy Modeler signing off. Thank you.